right, people, we're going to talk today about white collar, blue collar, and new collar professions and where they fit in to this economic jungle we find ourselves in in the 21st century. While I'm talking, I want you to watch this video I'm overlaying here of a gentleman with one hell of a blue collar skill set. That is the skill set of driving. You don't think about those guys out here and those ladies out here who drive the tractor trailers for a living or uh, are train engineers. They, they drive that locomotive. How about the uh, person who drives that medic unit? You get an append, uh, a certain sudden rather attack of appendicitis. They come scoop you up, and get you to the hospital and get you all taken care of. Driving is a... Uh, very important skill set. It's a blue collar skill set. A lot of people overlook it. And I can tell you, as you see this guy right here who's being attacked by bandits in South Africa, they want the money that's in his truck. Now, they these guys that are after him, they don't watch this channel because if they did, then they'd know that you don't have to resort to these means to make some money. But anyway, I doubt if the best autonomous driving program in the world right now could do what this man is doing, all right? So, white collar, blue collar, new collar. We had old Joe Biden come out here recently and say that he wants four more years of public education tacked on to the 12 that we already have. Now, I don't know where he's going to put them. Uh, maybe you'll start school at the age of two. Um, maybe you'll finish at the age of 20. Who knows? But old Joe wants four more years of public education because that's the answer, right? More schooling. Never mind the fact that uh, we've got colleges giving out degrees that are pretty much worthless. Women's studies, African-American studies. What companies need that? I can't think of one. So when we talk about economic security and freedom in the future, we want to look at three sectors. Now, everybody's familiar with white collar. I used to be a white collar worker myself, uh, and I worked with, you know, I'm not going to say I worked with my mind, although I did, but I don't want to give you the impression that these blue collar and new collar folks don't work with their minds because nothing could be further from the truth. They, blue collar and new collar, work with their minds and their hands. They've These are people that got the dirt under their fingernails and are, you know, putting their hands on things, making them work. My brothers are all mechanically inclined. They can fix cars uh, and they all are CDL certified drivers. They get behind the wheel of dump trucks and tractor trailers, transport goods uh, and materials. OK, so we've talked a lot about white collar, blue collar. You know pretty much how to identify that. But what is a new collar job? Where does it fit in? A new collar job is a person who has a skill set that they may have developed on their own, all right? Coding, for example, uh, and they're just damn good at it, and they don't need a college to verify that. They don't need a piece of paper to validate them in the area that they have built an expertise in, and guess what? More companies are starting to recognize that. Elon Musk over at Tesla has said, look, I'm not concerned with what college you graduated from. I'm concerned with, can you do the job? And can you do it well? This is Elon Musk's talking. This is a gentleman that owns a space transportation company. And of course he owns Tesla and a solar panel company. All right. I mean, th th this is the epitome of technology that this gentleman is working with. And He's saying, look, all this schooling is less important than your skill set. So that new collar is identified and characterized by someone who has gone out there and mastered a skill outside of a certification. Well, they may have a certification, but they're self-taught. OK, so they went out and they actually developed a skill set got a certification maybe as opposed to a degree they concentrated and focused totally on building that skill set so they didn't sit in the college for four years and take a whole bunch of uh, general general education requirements that had nothing to do 
with the job that they would end up doing. And hey, I'm all for being a well-rounded individual, okay? As many of you know, I'm, I really love to study astronomy and quantum physics. Uh, working on a project right now with NASA to figure out how to feed astronauts on long-term space missions. So I would think that I'm well-rounded, okay? Uh, I like historical biographies and I, I'm a bit of a history buff. But you don't need to pay some college in order to acquire those ancillary skills or to burnish uh, other interests you may have. That's an old paradigm that needs to die. Right now, people need to concentrate not on more theoretical uh, concepts and a lot of schooling and education, uh, which in many uh, forms takes uh, on the look of indoctrination. They need to concentrate on skills, hard skills. Now, you might say, well, Tyrone, what, what hard skills do you have? We've heard you say you're a lobbyist and you've done all kinds of regulatory and political work. You know what? There was a point at which I said, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty inadequate here. I don't have that, that blue collar skill set that my brothers have. Turn on some AC, you might hear it. Uh, and I need to go out here and get me some hard skills. So when I left Washington, D.C., and my wife and I started to really concentrate more on these businesses, and this was back in 2008. One day, uh, after I had realized that I needed some blue collar skills, I was passing by a, uh, a, a volunteer firehouse. And you know, when you, when you focus your mind on something, the universe will deliver you some options. So I'm passing by this volunteer fire department and it says, we need volunteers, we'll train. Boom, that's it. I, I knew those firefighters had a lot of different skills that you know were hands-on, and I figured this was a good way not only to acquire those skills, but to give back to my community. So I went in there, I filled out an application, and I became a firefighter in Baltimore County. Years later, I uh, also became an emergency medical technician. And my wife, she, uh, her dad, May God rest his soul, he recently passed away. But her dad was very uh, mechanically inclined and he could build cabinets and things like that. And she, you know, would always say, well, you know, my dad could build this cabinet. And now I say, look, I can't build cabinets. Um, I can't fix the plumbing. But if you have a cardiac arrest, I'm your man. You know, I can help you with your most valuable asset and getting back on your feet after you've been injured thanks to my EMT skills. So go out there, look at a skill, be it coding, be it plumbing, be it electricity. You don't necessarily need to follow this path where you need to stay in school for more than a quarter of your life in order to do what exactly? Uh, make just above minimum wage? That's an old paradigm. I certainly wouldn't adopt it. There are professions you need to be in school for, doctor, engineer, um, yeah, lawyer, but at the end of the day, new collar employment is where it's at. You're going to need a varied skill set that takes some from white collar, some from blue collar, mixes it in, and puts you on a path of continual education. Okay, You're not going to just study something and be done with it for 30 years now that you know it. Whatever you're getting into in the 21st century is going to evolve rapidly. You might get recertified in a year because technology is moving so fast. And don't forget, new collar and blue collar and white collar, always consider building a business around that. Don't just trade your hours and your skill for discounted dollars. Build a business. I know a young lady who is a phenomenal uh, mind when it comes to energy regulation. And she has such a varied resume and it's just, it, it's, it's so impressive, but she works for a state government. Talk about, I mean, the state governments aren't leading in this new energy push. And I've talked to this young lady and I've said, you need to take those phenomenal skills you have and you need to open up your own energy consultancy. And you need to take that skill and that experience that you've acquired and make millions. 
All right, so that's all for today. Go out and get yourself some uh, hardcore skills. Get into this new economy in a big way. I'll holler at you soon.